over 300 students miraculously healed of learning disorders when a very, very conservative British accountant prayed. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, here with Ian and Rosemary Andrews. And what's a nice accountant praying for thousands of people and them getting healed? Why did you just, well, I mean, how did, how did you make the transition from accountant to <laughs> praying for thousands of people? Very traumatically, I can tell you. <laughs> you look like a conservative Englishman, are you? I am, wait, yes. Wait, wait, is he? He is. His wife knows. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so how, I mean, how'd that happen? Well. I lost my job and uh, I tried to get other jobs and I couldn't speak two words without stammering. And for the first time in my life, it was a major problem in trying to find a job. And I prayed about it eventually. I, I came to an end of myself after 20, 30 interviews and then um, actually started praying and saying, God, what do you want me to do? And I heard God speak audibly from the corner of the bedroom I was in. He said, I've called you to preach the gospel and heal the sick. And I thought it was a joke. God doesn't joke. Well, I mean, he's had got you a heard, sense of humor. <laughs> and had you heard God speak that clearly previously? No, never. And, and how clear was it? Was it like, well, I think I, he's saying it or? I would say it was audible. Audible? It was that clear. I don't know if it was audible, uh, but I think it was. So you started praying for people and what happened? Uh, they got heals. Did and you, I was were, amazed. Were, were you, were, you were amazed. Were you, did you have like a supernatural thing from God for faith to believe people would be healed? No, I saw 3,000 people healed before I believed one of them would be. You're, you're serious? Yes. I had, abs I had no faith. It was my wife who had the faith and she would pray that God would provide and God would do this and I was secretly sort of praying God wouldn't do it so that I could go back to my normal life. Well, Rosemary, now the, normally the wife is the nester type and you, you don't you want a nice account? What do you want? Someone going out and praying for the sick and you don't know where the next dollar is going to come from. What kind of, how, how could you be encouraging him? <laughs> well, um, I wanted a challenge and uh, I believed that God said that he would do what he would do. And Ian didn't believe that he would do what he said he would do. So, so you're the one that had the faith and you're the one that did it. <laughs> I had to go and do it because we had to as get an some accountant, money, I had to get some money. I had yes, to pay the bills. That's what I was telling her. Yeah. <laughs> and so I began to get invitations to go to places and I would go there and stammer and splutter every single word and, and uh, a lot of people got healed and I would ask them afterwards, are you sure you were really sick? You know, because I couldn't believe it was happening. I mean, there's a lot of people that kind of fudge and make it happen. You weren't even, you didn't even want it to happen, I don't think. Well, I, w I would have. No. I was <laughs> thrilled when it happened, but I was amazed. I mean, it just wasn't in my paradigm. Uh, were you amazed, Rosemary? Um, no, not so much. I expected God to do something. Tell me the first miracle that you saw. The first miracle, I had to take a Catholic lady up to a house in England, and um, I just had to drive her up there and drop her off at her friend. And I got invited in, and they started to question me, what was I doing with my life and everything, and I stammered and splattered and said, well, I was going to have a ha 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 healing ma -ma -ma ministry. And they looked at me very strangely and said, I um, think we need to pray over you. Why don't you kneel on the carpet? And, and I think we need to pray some sense into you. That was how they put it. And so I knelt down because I thought, well, the quickest way I can get out of the house is to just have them pray and then leave. A nice cosmetic prayer. Yes, <laughs> a nice cosmetic prayer. And 
unfortunately, God spoke to me during their prayer and said, one of them has got a kidney problem and I want you to pray for them. And I thought to myself, well, I don't know where the kidneys are in the body or what they do. And I had two people there that I had a 50-50 chance of being right or wrong. And I thought, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I suppose I'd better say something. And I stammered out, which one of you has got a kidney problem? And it was the Catholic lady who acknowledged this. And I prayed every prayer that I think Oral Roberts or Catherine Coltman <laughs> or Morris Sorello or any of the old people have ever prayed because I, I didn't want to stop once I'd started because I'd had to admit this thing didn't work and I was being totally deluded as it were. And I stopped praying and there was this lady lying on the ground as though she was dead. And I hadn't seen anybody um, actually get hit like that or anything. So I, I picked up my raincoat and left the house. And I've had an itinerant ministry ever since. I, sort of, I heard about eight weeks later that she had gone to Lourdes and she'd gone to Rome and she'd kissed every step of the Vatican all the way up and down and, and she didn't get healed. She had one week left to live and she was totally healed as a result of the prayer. Now, now I've got to ask you something. Um, you stammered so bad that you couldn't put a couple of words together without stammering, but when you got, when you two got married, what happened to his stammering? It was as bad as ever when we were married. He was afterwards. A, oh, after we were married. But not during the actual during while, the ceremony. During, the, during ceremony, the ceremony. Oh, he was worried about whether he could say, I do. But he ma actually managed it yeah. because um, he said he felt God came to the wedding. We, weren't, we didn't believe in Jesus then, really. So uh, you stopped for a moment to say, I do, stopped your stammering, but then quickly went back to stammering. No, I, huh? I, I spoke clearly all through the service. I spoke clearly because the bridegroom has to give a speech and thank various people afterwards at the reception. And I did that fine. And after that, I went back to stammering as usual. But I, I have a question for you. First, obviously, it's not as bad as it was. No, it's not nearly as bad okay. as it was. But you have this great healing ministry. I mean, I've heard about you all over England. People get healed all over the place. <laughs> you know it. I know it. And mm -hmm. now our, our viewers know it. So why didn't God heal your stammering? Well, at the time he spoke to me audibly, I said to him, if you want me to do this, you have to heal me. And he said, I had the same trouble with Moses <laughs> as I, I got with you. I mean, <laughs> do you want me to give you a spokesman? And I said, no, I don't. And he then said, well, if you go as you are, everybody will know that you are not a healer. And you know something? God says he's not going to share his glory with anyone, but you are going to experience his glory in this next segment like you never thought possible. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hi, I'm Sid Roth here. Investigative reporter here with Ian and Rosemary Andrews. And I wish you could have heard some of our conversation before we came back because, Rosemary, you literally, a woman with full blown AIDS, a drug addict, you put your hand, weren't you a little afraid when you hugged that woman? Uh, of maybe, you know, yeah. getting something? Well, or? the thought did cross my mind. You can't, but most people think that. Yeah, the thought did cross my mind. And she must have been, you know, not the cleanest type of person. No, no, she didn't take care of herself. So why'd you do it? Why'd well, you hug a woman like that? Well, because um, Jesus went around touching people and he never caught their diseases. He gave them the answer to their problems. 
Now, when you hugged her, what happened? When I hugged her, she started to weep a little bit, and uh, I imagine no one probably reached out and hugged a woman like that, a drug addict and with AIDS. Oh no, no. Um, the friends that brought her to the meeting, they obviously cared about her enough to bring her, and I believed that because they showed compassion to their friend, that God would honour it. And he always honours those kinds of prayers because he was deeply moved with compassion for people and he's still moved with compassion now. now. you were deeply moved with compassion when you hugged her. What do you believe happened to her when you hugged her? I believe that the compassion and the healing love of Jesus flowed through me, right through her body and right through her soul. So what happened to her AIDS? It completely disappeared. Through a hug? Through a hug. <laughs> it's powerful because God is caught. You can catch God. You don't have to catch diseases, you can catch God. That so sounds a whole lot better to me than so diseases. It's so much better, actually. <laughs> yeah. Now, you, you obviously have a lot of compassion. You must have gone through a lot. Where would you get this compassion from? Well, I had a lot of pain in my life. And when I met Jesus and the Holy Spirit, um, he took away a lot of the anguish and pain and replaced it with his love and compassion and the compassion he showed to me. But tell um, me about that experience you had with Jesus. Well, um, I was very fearful and uh, was empty in my life and uh, so I was prayed for and opened up my heart to Jesus and uh, he just stood in that room and he looked at me and I knew it was him straight away although I'd never seen him before and he had laughing eyes and he could look straight through you and he said he didn't find anything wrong with me. What did that mean to you? It meant everything because I could hardly believe it because I'd always been accused and um, my parents um, had a very dysfunctional relationship and so everything in our house was that you were always in the wrong. And so I had a very low self-esteem. And to have Jesus himself tell me that I was all right set me free. And he was laughing. He said, it's me. He stood there and he said, it's me. And I said, oh, I know, it's you. And it was like he came into me. It was like all his words he was saying came into me. and. Um, I was filled up with his love and laughter until it exploded out of me. Did you laugh too? I laughed and laughed for about weeks. Three hours. Week. Did you see? Did you see a difference in your wife after that? I mean, it's <laughs> wonderful that she laughed and laughed and laughed. But what change happened in her? You tell me. A total transformation. Uh, she wasn't the woman I married. Everything about her was different. She was positive, she was extrovert, she was um, only ever wanting to talk to people about Jesus. Uh, I, I think Jesus kind of totally took over her life. Now speaking about being uh, an extrovert, I heard a story about you that you did a television show with a friend of mine, Jerry Rose, and it was live, yes. and what happened? Well, I didn't want to do it. And I prayed that it would snow, and it was <laughs> it was that it would snow so hard that I wouldn't be able to do this program. Can I start calling you Moses? <laughs> <laughs> well, the reluctant hero. The reluctant prophet. <laughs> I I prayed it would snow, and I woke up at the Howard Johnson's Inn, sort of about half past six in the morning, to get to the studio to no go snow. through it all. Beautiful sunshine in <laughs> Chicago. In, I think it was in February or March or something, and it was like a summer's day. And I got to the studio, we went up there, went into makeup, and he said to me, run down these steps, sit in this great big armchair, and say, praise God. And I thought, well, I'm English, and English people are kind of, I'm not gonna actually try to look large, fat, and prosperous, and say, praise God. So. Um, I was okay until the camera came on me. What and, happened? And I saw the small light 
on the camera light up and I froze. And I started to say praise, but all the word that would come out was pu. You started stammering and stuttering. And Jerry was almost like <laughs> having I can a heart picture attack that. in a sense. <laughs> um, I went through every kind of emotion known unto man. I mean, um, I was angry, I was afraid, I was embarrassed, I was resentful, I was critical. and. Finally, I said, Lord, it's over to you, and I gave up. And I couldn't have stammered if I'd tried. And he was sort of started into the conversation, but he didn't want to interrupt me once I could start to speak. So he just kind of encouraged me to keep going. And I had a picture very clearly come into my mind of a man that had a blue and gray check jacket on and a blue and gray hat at the side of his bed. And he was planning, I don't know how God communicated this to me, but I knew he was planning on committing suicide. He was going to drive up the Can expressway. Can you imagine? He was planning on committing suicide, and Ian actually saw a picture of that happening. We're going to find out what happened when we come back. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter with Ian and Rosemary Andrews right here, and I'm on the edge of my seat, literally. Ian is doing live TV, stammering and stuttering all over the place, and uh, Jerry Rose, his host, is just, you know, trying to do the best he can. He has a live TV going on, and, and uh, Ian can't say anything without stammering, and all of a sudden he has a vision. And he saw a man at the edge of his bed. What else did you see? Well, he had a blue and gray check jacket on, and he was planning on committing suicide. He was a very depressed individual. And he had chosen to drive up the expressway the wrong way and hit mm. the first car, truck, or whoever, head on, as fast as he could go and end his life. So you, you said what you saw. They put up the telephone number, and what happened? Uh, the telephone rang, <laughs> and it was this man, and he wanted to know how I knew and what I knew and everything else. And I how looked, did you know he was going to commit suicide? How did you know what I he no was wearing? Idea. I had no idea. God <laughs> just spoke to me on the inside and told me. And, and so what happened? It what's was the strange. bottom line? What happened to him? I looked straight into the camera lens, straight in. And I said, and God loves you, and God's told me all about you, sir, and God doesn't want your life to end. God's got a plan for your life. And um, uh, he didn't commit suicide. Did he come to know God? Yeah, he came to know God on that particular program, as far as I know. But I'm going to tell you what excites me even more than that. When Ian talks about Jesus in the garden and blood coming out of his head, sweat, of, rather than sweat, it was blood coming out, rather than sweat, every area of someone's head gets healed, whether they have tumors, whether they have depression in their mind, suicidal thoughts, whether they have uh, attention uh, 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 disabilities, uh, w whether they're dyslexic, they have difficulty reading. Tell me one quick testimony of someone that got healed when you spoke about this. One quick testimony, there was a spastic girl and she was four years of age. She was crippled down one side of her body. Her hand could not open. Her thumb was locked across her palm. I prayed for her and the only thing we saw was her thumb start to slightly go across her hand. After two days, she could hold her first cup. After six months, she had enrolled in gymnastics classes and was jumping up on parallel bars, and she's totally healed. How about people that are dyslexic? Has someone ever, uh, uh -huh. when you've spoken on this subject, uh, have they not been able to read and all of a sudden look at their Bible and read? Exactly, yes, exactly. One, tell me one person. Um, 
there were two boys in America and uh, they couldn't concentrate at all, um, couldn't um, read, their words were all jumbled up and instantly after praying for them they could read mm. quite difficult words out of the Bible mm. quite clearly and this has happened to loads and loads of people, especially children. Ian, are, I got people, invited are, people to going, the me, are mm -hmm. people going to be healed right now in the, any area of these that we're talking about? They can be healed of dyslexia right now. They can be healed of depression. They can be healed of brain tumors. It's very simple. Tell, tell me how. I heard a message preached about Jesus' sweat drops of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. And I'm not redeemed through silver and gold, but by the blood of Jesus. And I felt God spoke to me very clearly. He said, if you preach this, I will heal brain damage, dyslexia, ADD, etc. Anything wrong with the head. We have probably seen today 2,000 people healed of dyslexia around the world. We've seen brain tumors. We've seen massive brain damage. 35% of brain cells have been recreated. Mm. Well, well, you spoke at a Bible college in Dallas, Texas, yes. Christ for the Nations, yep. and what happened? Well, um, there were in the region of 300, 350 students suffering from dyslexia. And I've heard since that everyone I, was, I prayed for was totally healed. Will you pray for people right now? I will pray for them right now. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, I thank you that Jesus sweat drops of blood and he sweat drops of blood, not for himself, but for everybody who's got a head problem. In Jesus' name, I command these head conditions to leave now. I bind this dyslexia. I command it to go right now in the name of Jesus. I pray right now in Jesus' name that people will be healed of this condition. I don't know, to be honest with you, if this program gets up and out to the West Coast, out to, it does. Out to the Washington it area, does. Yes. but there's a, a person over there that has severe pains in their head right now, and all those pains are leaving. I think it's like a brain tumor, but all the pains are going. Um, it's almost like they have an enlarged head in some way. It's beginning to shrink under the power of God right now as I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. We've got somebody else over in the uh, Michigan area. Do you get over there? Yes, we're there. You do, okay. Um, and they have a severe reading disability. And if they'll go to a Bible, if they'll open it, they'll find out they'll be able to read that Bible right now. Words are not going to slip down the page. They're not going to be moving over. Uh, it's going to be very, very clear. We ha have a person over in uh, Paris at the moment who's very depressed and it's like you're in front of the television set and you're crying and you're weeping and you've got what I would call a purple or a mauve dress on. Uh, I'm not very good with colors, but it's that kind of a shading. Quickly. And um, they the touch reason, your TV screen. If you touch your TV screen right now, God's power will go right through you and heal you and take away all of that depression in Jesus' name. You Amen. are whole. Not because I say so, but because God says so. You are whole in any area of your head, anything. If you have Alzheimer's, you have difficulty remembering, if you have difficulty seeing, hearing, speaking, I tell you, a tumor in the brain that the presence because of the blood of Jesus is being, you are being healed. What a wonderful present that God gave us, His only Son. That blood is so, it's precious.